No. Would be right. Okay. Sir, man, all right, people read. All right, anybody else? Yes, sir, man. Okay, hearing different stuff. All right, all right, yes, ma'am. It can what? Taint you, taint your spirit. Good. So, once you get truth, that would be like once you taste some real good food. Some real good food. And then somebody want to offer you something else. Some, <laughs> some raw meat. Oh, Lord. Once you get some, some real sustenance, some real food. But then you ask me, that would be like me allowing you to go somewhere else where then I know for the fact that the food is not cooked. It's contaminated. It's not good at all. There's no way that this preacher will ever tell you it's okay. Because I know that that could kill you. So it would not be so much of me. I'm going to get you. It's not so much you would say, uh, Pastor just don't want us around. He's trying to make it all together. See, that's why I don't like that church because it's like a cult. They don't, they don't let you do that. And no, it ain't got nothing to do with that. But if they're not preaching truth, and so that's why I'll ask a question like this. I'll say, well, uh, what do they preach? I say, well, they'll say, well, they preach Jesus. I say, they preach Jesus. Okay, everybody preaches Jesus. I say, well, then how do they baptize? And when they receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, how do we know? What's the evidence? How do, what do they say? Do they preach that? They say, well, no, they don't do like what, what you say, Pastor, here. But, you know. And so off the back, I'm telling you. <laughs> If they can't tell you, if that church is not telling you what you are to do to be saved, according to the scriptures, there is no need for you to eat off anything in that place. No need. I don't care if it's anniversary service. I don't care what type of service is going on with them. There is no need for you to eat off that table if the stuff is not right and you can base it off the salvation plan. Unless you go on and preach the truth. Unless pastor sent you to go over there, tell them the truth. They're going to let you preach? Go ahead and preach. But if, if, if I haven't sent you out to go and do that, you're going into an area by yourself, uncovered, no protection, no covering, saying, I know the word and I can go by myself. Well, you go, you probably can die. That's dangerous to do that. It's very dangerous to do that. So with that being said, if there is somebody was to ask, hey, well, can I do that? I'm going to say, if it's not true, and this is what I, people may don't like when I say this, but in, in the Glade area, it's about two other churches outside of us that preaches truth. One and a half. She said one and a half. One and a half. One and a half. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> The whole truth and nothing but the truth So maybe maybe about one <laughs> One extra One extra <laughs> But from South Bay Bell Glade To Canal Point To uh, Pahokee There is none That's preaching The apostolic message One Lord, one faith, one baptism Acts 2.38, repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's about one, two, three apostolic churches that are in this area. And so with that being said, if it's not no one of those apostolic churches, mm -mm, not one, now, most people say, well, wait a minute, but there is a nice church over in South Bay. I'm telling you, there is not no truth up in South Bay at all. As my brother said, speak it out loud, brother. At all. At all. 
Not one. Pahokee? Mm -mm. Not one. And there was a lot of churches there in Pahokee. There were a lot. But not one. And I'm not afraid to stand to tell it, the whole city, the whole county that. Not one. Yes. I did my research with, with Bishop Davey and Pastor Collins. Before we came down here to set up anything to find out if there were any truth proclaiming churches in here. And we know those churches who preaches that in this area. You said one or something? So today, it's not there. <laughs> today, it ain't there. Today, it's not there. Go. Not there. So the reason why I say to anybody, the reason why we came here was because truth was not being preached in this area. Truth was not being preached. Order was not in this area. Truth was not here. Order was not here. Growth was not here. God's will being done was not here. His hand upon the church was not here. That's the only reason. If not, I would have still been in Tampa. And that's just the plain truth. That's the plain truth truth. Not to say that we so people looking at y'all is just so confident y'all so this, y'all so arrogant y'all so conceited, y'all so this, y'all so that no, I'm just making it transparent to you being real with you and I don't have a problem telling that to anyone just being plain and honest with you. Go ahead. found out here it was a lot of religion religious people religious what do I mean when I say religious what is when I say when I speak religious people what, what do I mean by that you see a lot of religious what would you say what church going people a lot of church going fashion shows okay <laughs> a lot of religion religious people very religious. Go to church, deacon board, evangelists and ministers, minister this, minister that, prophet, apostle, all of this stuff. Diocese, bishop diocese, archbishop, all of these different titles and different things and that was in the church, that's in the church. All of this stuff that was here. So a lot of religious and people were caught up in religious things. But the true, raw, uncut word of God was not being preached and uphold. And where there are standards, according holiness standards, truth being preached, order being in the, in the church, and growth happening. So now, if that's the case, tell me where the church is. So it's not being arrogant, confident, like that or anything like that. But I'm talking about the church of the living God. That's all. The church of the living God needed to be in the glade area. And thanks be to God that we're all a part of it. Amen. So now that we have this truth, I'm buying, buying the truth and I'm not selling it. I'm not just allowing it. 
Because the devil is always going to meet your price. Look at 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 1 to 3. And let me ask you this. Has anybody ever said anything to you like you've been saved? You've been saved. Has anybody ever said, you think you're the only one saved? Anybody in family feel like say that I said that to you? Family members or friends said, you think you're the only one saved? Acting too holy. What do you say back to them? I, I just want to know. Okay, no, without holy no one says she God. What did, what did, when your family or friends say, you act like you're the only one saved, just talk. I just want to know from your feedback. Which is, you say, I am. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Uh huh. So they can, so everybody can hear. She attended uh, Bible studies in our home. We used to have Bible study every Thursday night. My husband was teaching it. So she became very upset, almost furious, and said, We think we're the only one saved. But she didn't say it in the Bible study, but talked to her. And personally, she said that to me. What we did for her was to continue to teach the Word of God. So she was still coming to the Bible studies, and about, what, two years later? Two years later, she was baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. We just didn't compromise, right. and it was the Word of God. We didn't fight with her or debate with her. We right. just went straight to the Word of God every time she came to Bible study. Amen, amen. Um, sis, you would say something? Um, pretty much the same thing she said. That, <laughs> like, not arguing with them, or because that doesn't lead anywhere. They're definitely not going to get saved that way, but just keep reminding them of the truth. And sometimes I'll even joke about, like, well, technically, no, I'm not, because there's others that are filled with the Holy Ghost Amen. and baptized in Jesus' name. But just keep praying for them and just proclaiming the truth so that way eventually. Like her sister, they will get saved, and if they perish, then they have no excuse because they perish. Amen. Amen. So we're not saying that there is not no other people that are saved. That's that, that's far from what I'm saying. That's not true. I'm not saying there was no people here in Belgrade that was bapt that hadn't been baptized, filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and trying and living according to the Scripture. I'm not saying that that, but I'm talking about God's church that His hand is upon. That's what I'm saying. Amen. And so look at this right here when we talk about this whole thing that the enemy will try to do whatever he can to sell uh, for you to sell out this truth. That you have. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the plague palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Next verse. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house. And I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the, the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me, that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. Look at the attitude or the, the posture that Ahab, I mean, not Ahab, but Naboth had. What he's saying is, listen, I can't sell it to you. Because I got it from my father. He got it from his father. And he got it from God. And what God pretty much has given us is not for sale. God gave me this salvation and it is not for sale. I'm not selling it out for nobody, for not no one, no false religion, no, no status, no money, no nothing. What I got from God, only God was able to give it and nobody else can give that to me. And he gave it to me. It's so precious like that pearl, that parable, so precious what we have found that we're going to hold on to this thing, this thing called truth. 
We're going to hold on to it. Holiness. Being saved. The only way to be saved. The one God. The apostolic faith. We're going to hold on to this thing. No matter what. And I'm not selling it out for anybody. I'm not compromising for anything. No matter what might come. Because the devil will watch and see. I see you paying attention to this. It seems like you want this. And will offer it to you. Sometimes people won't position. If you won't position, you come to my church, you be the head deacon, head minister, head prophet, head deacon, head this. So some people are sell out for position because they're going to make you the head of this or that and this and that. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Let me, let, me, let me give you something with that. Look at Matthew 20, verse 20. Matthew 20, verse 20. Now watch this. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. Now watch what they're desiring. And he said unto her, what will thou? She said unto him, grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on the right hand and the other on the left, in thy kingdom. What is she asking? What is she asking? What is she what is she, what is she saying? No. That's right. They're asking Jesus. She's asking Jesus, can my son have the highest position in your kingdom where they sit next to you on your left and your right? But in the real kingdom of God, if you want to go higher, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. Let's keep reading what I'm talking about. Verse 22. But Jesus answered and said, ye know not what ye ask. Put it in NLT, make it simple. But Jesus answered by saying to them, you don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering that I am about to drink? Oh, yes, they replied. We are able. You see that? <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yes, Jesus, I'm with you. Sound like, you know, Peter. I'm down. I'm down with you. I'm not going to sell out at all. I'm not selling out. But watch this. <laughs> Jesus told them, you will indeed drink from my bitter cup. But I have no right to say who will sit on my right or my left. My father has prepared those places for the ones he has chosen. And everybody might feel like, well, yes, I want to go higher this and this and that. And I'm going to do this. Well, the question is, how many of us have already sold out for the small little things? Let me give you one. I'm tired. You going back tonight? I'm tired. Got a little headache coming. It ain't there, but it's coming. <laughs> but we want what? <laughs> so if you really want this thing, what are we selling out for? I'm not selling out for anything. For nothing would I allow to come between me and God and what God has for me. Don't sell out for anything. Don't say, has anybody ever been in a position where you are, uh, somebody said that they had your back and when you turned around, uh, they were not there? Just talk back to me. Let's be real. How does it feel? It's embarrassing. Come on. Anybody else? What, what do you? And, and, and just gone. Okay. 
disappointing. What, what do you say, sir? Lack of, you, you just trust they know more than just okay. You want to beat them up? That's the natural part. Yes, sis. Yes. I mean, ain't nobody trying to say it though. But yeah, when I see you, we fight. <laughs> and that was the similar to the, what what happened. I would say before the Lord saved me. I thank God for that He saved me because we were in the my brother and I was in a situation that we were somewhere. And, you know, people that act like, you know, man, hey, I'm down for you. I wish somebody would and this and that. Well, when it came and it, and it got to that point and we, we were about to, this big old group and it was about to go down. Next thing you know, we turned around and I'm looking for the guy that said that he was down. And when we turned around and I go to look, he's no longer there. <laughs> he wasn't there. Right in my mind, I wasn't even thinking about the guys that we were about to get into it with. I was thinking about him. That if I live to see another day after this is over with, I'm not coming back for them. I'm going to get him. Because that's how we felt with Trey. And so, here it is. Us, we sometimes can sell out for little things that really don't matter in our lives. I want to do whatever I can to hold on to this truth that I have. Because if you let it go, you may not get it back. And we know that from who? Judas. When he, did, when he got the money, he tried to give it back. But they didn't want, no. You sold out already. And once you find out this little measly stuff that you sold out for, you may be like, man. That's how people get into relationships. And then when you sell out for that relationship, and then when you find out that it really wasn't nothing, and now you're looking at the other person like, look, get away from me. Because you, it really comes out what the person was all about. Get away from me. That's what happens. Go ahead. Yes. And you know, we don't think people come in 24, 32, 24, you know them fine cocoa <laughs> Go ahead, man. You know, we, don't, we don't expect yes. him to come, you know, five feet tall, six packs, yeah, six yeah. Packs, you know, not drop. We don't expect that. When we see that, we say, oh my God, God has blessed me. He has sent me a good man. Yes. Oh my God, the woman that I had in my mind is dead. There she is. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> so, the thing is, you ask yourself, what are you selling out to? Are you selling out to your own flesh and, only, and your own pleasures? What makes sense and what pleases you? Because you can keep everybody else away. But can you stop yourself? You can keep everybody else away, but can you stop yourself? Anybody that they tell me that they have spoken in tongues when they receive the Holy Ghost, I'm not the person to say that you have not. If you tell me that you were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, only you know that for sure. And God, I'm not going to tell you that you haven't been, but I will know them by their fruit. 
And so if there's some things that they're lacking, then I'm saying, okay. But I can look and be able to say, okay, you're lacking some of the fruit of the Spirit. But I should be able to see something, some fruit of the Spirit. If I don't see any of that, and when it comes to family, friends, or anybody, I'm not the person to be trying to take on people's problems. Let me explain to you what I'm saying. This is the greatest counsel that someone has ever given me. As a pastor, I know that we all have problems. Amen? Amen. Amen. So imagine as me as a pastor taking on everybody's burdens and issues and problems. What would happen to me? Uh, what say? Burnt out. I'll be burnt out. So I'm not the problem solver. That I'm not that. I'm just a messenger from God. Your burdens and your problems belong to Him. So when you come to me, I'm not trying to figure out a solution per se for you. What I'm going to give you is what God has given me. Give you the word. That would be like this. Pastor, I'll give you an example. Um, I'm having a problem uh, in my home because of this. And I'll ask you, well, who's in the home? When I got this, are they say, uh-uh. Okay, this is going on? Okay. Is there a reason why they're there? Well, I just let them come because this and this and that. Now, here is, this, here is what I'm going to give you from the scripture. You need to get all of that stuff that is not trying to live for God out of your home because that's hindering you. You want to know what scripture that says? Anybody know what scripture I'm speaking of when I say that? How can two walk together except they agree? Come out from among them. So that's it. That's the counsel from the scripture. And when I walk away from you, I'm not wondering when I walk away, I wonder what's going on if they did it. I'm not worrying my mind about that. So when you come back to me and you say to me, Pastor, I'm still struggling this and that. I'm saying, did you do what I, this, what I told you to do? If you say no, you're not going to wear me out. You're not going to wear me out. You're not, you're not going to, I can't, I can't take on that. So all I'm going to do is tell you what the scripture says, and it's for you. So the greatest counsel that was ever told with me was, don't ever try to fix people's problems. Let them fix them themselves after you have given them scripture. So from that, I, I sleep well. I go to bed real, I, I'm gone. My wife will tell you when I'm gone, I'm gone. Here's the other thing with here's the other thing with that. Because you have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You have to do that. So this is what would tend to happen. Uh, Brother Lewis, can I use you for a second? So. This is how people would do you. And this is this is leadership one on one. <laughs> I know it's not Saturday, but this is leadership. This is how people do you. Pastor, I got all these problems and this and that. This is what's going on with me and this and this and that. And then I just need to talk to you about this and stuff like that too. And then this and this and that. And then also, I just wanted to tell you one more thing too. And this is what this and this and that. Now, I've just given all of my problems. And I walk away. And then I come back and say, did you fix that for me yet? Now, this is the problem. I gave him a couple of things. But when you talk to people, people leave stuff out. Right. So now you at home trying to put this puzzle together and ain't got all the pieces. Right. Wearing yourself out like, man, I don't know what's going on. Oh, no. I'm giving all this stuff back to you. Right. Just like that. <laughs> and giving you scripture. And let you take this stuff and go sort this stuff out. Because if I hold on to that, I'm going to kill myself. Same thing, Jephro and Moses. Moses, you're going to wear yourself out. You're going to wear yourself out. I'm, I'm not doing that no way. Not at all. Not at all. Go ahead. Pastor, can we look at... Uh, it was Adam who was supposed to have actually Proverbs 22 and 3. Proverbs 
Proverbs? Okay. Proverbs 4 and verse 17. Verse 13 to 17. Let's put that up for you. Take fast hold of instructions. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of the evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. For thus they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Put it in the NLT first for me, verses 13. Proverbs. Take hold of my take hold of my instruction. Don't let them go. Guard them for they are the, the key to life. Don't do as the wicked do, and don't follow the path of the evildoers. Don't even think about it. Don't go that way. Turn away and keep moving. For evil people can't sleep until they've done their evil deed for the day. They can't rest until they've caused someone to stumble. They eat the food of the wickedness and drink the wine of violence. So when it comes to this, I, I will always tell you, if they're not saved, well, leave, leave that alone. Because if you're trying to live saved and somebody around you is not trying to be saved, you're going to end up falling. You're going to end up falling. And that's how that goes. Let me give you just a little bit more uh, regarding this. We talked about the talents. Uh, turn to Proverbs 18 and 16. Anybody, just by showing that, who has talents in here? Talents and gifts. Some people are raising your hand. Who got gifts and talents real high? <laughs> talents and gifts. Let's shame the devil one more time. <laughs> Talents and gifts. Everybody? Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. All right. Let's look at this thing. Proverbs 18 and 16. So you will no. Either you don't want to say it because you don't want me to grab you sometimes. Is that what it is? Okay. <laughs> you don't want to say it. Okay. But watch what it says. And man's gift maketh rule for him and bringeth him before great men. Now, what is that scripture saying? Put it in the NLT. I want you to talk back to me. All right? My brother still got his hand up like, yes, I got many talents. All right. Given a gift can open doors. It gives access to important people. Yeah? What does that mean? Your gift will make room for you. Go Okay. Okay, I've been working in the customer service industry for over 20 years. And there was a particular time that I was unemployed. And I have always been like an entrepreneur. I love to sell things, sir. I love selling stuff. Yeah, I just like doing business. And I like, I sit at home and like, oh my God, no work and just keep complaining, complaining, complaining. And you know, one day I just got up and I went into my closet and I took out some old stuff, clothes that I wasn't wearing, stuff that I wasn't using, and I just started selling things. I just started selling. That was my passion. That was a gift I had. Sir, I would sell you anything i can sell you just about anything one lady come to my my house one day and she's like look out look out everybody i need a light bulb no, i love business like that I, i'm very passionate when it comes to 
to that type of thing. Amen. A lady came to my house and she was like, you know, I was just going down the road and in a light bulb, but the shop is closed. And I screwed up one of mine and I sold it to her. Wow. That's how much I'm, I, I, so my gift made room for me. I was able to make money to help my family because of that gift that I have. And I was just, sometimes we have the gifts and we are going out there. We want other people to employ us and we don't realize the talents that we have in ourselves that we can go on and make jobs Amen. for ourselves so yeah i can i love to sell if you all need anything you come and check me out <laughs> <laughs> amen <laughs> amen oh, go. <laughs> oh, okay go ahead i'm gonna get you sir uh-huh Amen. So one thing about a gift, even if you just use a company or even a ministry, if there is no position for that gift, but once that leader or once that voice see that gift and they know that that gift can cause their company to prosper, or that leader knows that that gift is needed, even though there's not a position, they'll make a position Amen. for that gift. Amen. 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 All right. Go ahead, sir. That's why we would say in the house of God, we don't never have to compete. In the house of God where there's truth, there is no need for competition or competing. That's how you keep, you keep, keep that out. Because when the time comes, if it is needed, then it will be asked of you to do that. I never told Bishop Davey that I knew how to say it. I didn't go to New Life saying, hey, I can say it. I didn't do that. One of the ministers there, a uh, close friend of mine to this day, a close, very, very close friend, um, asked me to be over the youth. And I did something with the youth, the young men. That's what I was doing. He told me to be with the youth and the young men. And so we were supposed to do something for the service. And in that service, um, the young man did a little uh, routine and they sung and I sung with them. Well, I wasn't trying to do it to say, let me get the mic. Y'all stay back there. I'm up front. I wasn't trying to do that no way. It was about the young men. But after that was done, whatever the little that Bishop did here, he said, hey, young man, you know, Brother Otis, I want you to, I would like for you to do praise and worship. And I'm like, praise and worship. And I took for a long time trying to stay away from him. That's what I'm doing, as some of us are trying to do. I did for a long try, time trying to stay away from him from what he was asking me to do. So I'm, you know, I'm ducking and dodging. Hey, Bishop. Trying to get up out of his way because I don't want him to. But he kept saying to me, now, son, I need you to go talk to, which was the music director, with O'Neill. And I want you to be start to sing in the praise of worship. The third time, he didn't even look at me. This is what he did. Now, some of you might not take this right, but I, I'm submitted to the authority that was there. But he simply said, for those, and he didn't look at me. When he did that, I knew that he was serious. I was like, yes, sir. But that's the authority that I submitted myself unto. That some people, you may not be there. You may not be there. You, you may not be there. But I thank God for that because he has, that has made me who I am today. And one of the greatest things that was said was that when you go down to Belgium, you're going to have more people there that will be submitted because how submitted you are. You reap 
what you saw. You'll be a great follower, you'll be a greater leader. You'll be able, God will put you in certain places. But anybody that has never submitted, whatever type of ministry that you ever go into, you're going to have some rebellious people. Rebellious. And so, following him and doing what he said, the next thing you know, from that, it went to the man, it bid to choir. After that, trying to direct a man's choir. After that, the, the, the young people's step team. After that, the mind ministry. After that, uh, all of these other things started to come along after that. I wanted to do this, do that. But what was he doing? It was, it was developing me. It was, it was actually developing me to where. So my gift was making room for me in other different places that I didn't even know that I was going to be going in that direction. I didn't know when he put me over the singles ministry what that was going to do. I'm going to give you an opportunity to work with men and women. I'm going to put you in certain situations. So it was growing and growing and growing and growing. And so the gift of the little bit of singing that I was doing, it opened up doors to so many other things that because I was submitted and I was submitted under an authority to allow me to lead that gift, I never came up and and say, I should be able to get the lead song and I should be able to sing and I want to do this and I want to do that. It was never that. But it was, let's try you out over here. Let's try you out over here. Let's see if you can do this. Let's see if you can do this. How faithful are you over this? And your room, your gift is making room for you. So now here in, 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 in Belgley, not only the, the you would say the city of Belle Glade, but it's now open room to Pahokee, South Bay, Clewiston, Canal Point. And just by the teaching, God has used somebody to allow me to be able to get behind the walls in the prison. So can you imagine that once this thing is all over with, that God is allowed to, he just used little old, little old me and the people that was with me to spread this gospel, not only on the streets here, but behind the walls. Could you imagine somebody behind the walls preaching this same thing? And souls not only getting saved out here, but they're saved in this, saved over there. And all this time you was thinking, little old me. Little old me. But this is what God would do. Your, your gift will make room for you in so many other places. People will give you jobs. People are just to say, hey, I, 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 can you come work for me? Just giving stuff to you. Just giving it to you. And then, you, like the scripture says, go back to the scripture for me, Sid. What, what platform would it put you in front of? Your gift. And man's gift make room for him and bringeth him before great men. Can I ever have the opportunity to teach a Bible study to the governor? Could I ever have an opportunity to preach to the man? Would they ever come here one day? <laughs> Amen. Hey, what do you want to say, man? They watching me on Facebook. How you doing, man? Come on by here in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Julie Boulevard. So I'm saying all of these things. Whatever God has put inside of you, you want to use it, but you don't want to hide it and be sitting there saying, no, I don't want to do that because your gift will make room for you. And if you don't, the thing that's going to happen when God comes back, he'll say, what did you do with what I gave you? So the little thing that he gave me, I can be able to say, Lord, you gave me this and I'm able to give this all back to you. You invested in me and this is what you got on your return on your investment. I didn't bury my time. I didn't put it to the side. But neither did I come in pushing my way in talking about, I know how to do this and y'all need to let me do it and let me do it the way I want to do it and not this and this and that. No, submissive and humbly, whatever you ask me to do, yes. That when when when, the, when leadership sees it, they say, man, you did that good. Can, can you try this? Can you be over this? Can you teach this class? Can you do this? Can you do that? It'll put you in certain places that you will be able to say, I didn't put myself in. I was sent to do this. And God is behind you all the way. And you know, to add on to that, Pastor, a lot of times members in ministry, they do not understand why the pastor will call certain people to do certain things. And even though they'll say, well, I could have did that. Yeah. But what you don't.
don't understand, you don't have to give. You know, and so leadership recognize those that have certain gifts and talents, and they'll call upon them. And a lot of times, other men will get mad and upset. I'm saying this to say this. I, I was in an uh, apostolic ministry for, oh my God, from ever since 1993, uh -huh. under Pastor R.G. Week, until uh, I relocated down here. Even though I have left that ministry, and I'm, I'm within this ministry here, if that apostle needs a certain thing, he still will call to <laughs> Because why? Because he's aware. Or what am I getting? Mm -hmm. you, you see? And so that's why we have to understand in ministry, we have to understand and don't feel bad when the pastor calls certain people to do certain things. He's not saying you don't, you you don't, you know, that's not your gift. You need to understand what your gift is for one thing. Amen. You, you know, Amen. and understand when, okay, pastor loves me, but pastor calling that one that he knows. That's going to get the job done. And not every time he calls, well, what you doing? Well, Pastor, I feel so good. Oh, Pastor, I was sitting in the bed. Did you call? Well, Pastor, you know I was thinking about it. But you know, Pastor, I didn't think I'd see. So, Pastor, I get someone to say, hey, I need you to do this. Well, Pastor, I don't know what you're doing. And he knows it's going to get done. Because he's aware. Amen. 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 This is your business. You're the CEO. I know some people have businesses in here. You're the CEO of your business. Will you, will you ask somebody that's willing to listen to you? Or would you ask somebody that's willing to give you a hard time to work, to, to, to work for you? Just, huh? Just to listen or not listen? But go ahead. Go ahead. Exactly right. That's gonna be. Exactly. That's what the problem is going to be in the church. That's right. And I've, I've seen it so many times. Amen. Because that person that, or say that person who may have been in that congregation for a longer time uh -huh. than who was who just coming in there, mm -hmm. feel entitled to that position, but yet God don't say you must get it. Right. That's right. Yes. It sure will. But this is why you have to make sure. And this is how this is how I make sure with that being said. That my pastor and my leadership is led by the Holy Ghost. That's one thing first. Making sure that the leadership is led by the Holy Ghost. And the leadership is submitted. If the leadership is submitted and the leader is led by the Holy Ghost, well, then that's how you know, which is why I say all the time, you're at a good place. Because based on leadership. Now, are there some that will say, well, I just don't feel that this leader is being led by the Holy Ghost? Well, you know them by their fruit. That if this wasn't going the way that it should be going, Adding to the church, you would not see it here. That's right. That's right. Now, people can say certain things, and I can say certain things about Bishop Davy and certain pastor and certain things, but I know him by their fruit. That the fruit they're bearing lets me know God is leading them on this, God's hand is on this, and he's added to the church daily, such as to be saved. And so that alone lets me know. That the people that he has put in position and in place, it is being led by the Holy Ghost of who can, who should be able That's to right. do that. That's right. That's right. With that being said, 
then you are able to see if it's getting done and it's flowing. Because if it's chaos and disorder, if it's favoritism, if it's any of that, you better believe God is going to put a halt to this thing and be like, I'm not with that. So some may say, well, no, I, I just feel like favoritism is over here, this, this, and that. Well, then you would need to go to God and say, well, God, why do you keep adding to the church daily then? Something it should be telling you by the fruit. This is in order. This is what's happening. This is what's doing this. This is what's doing that. Because my whole desire is to please God. That's my whole desire. And I know I cannot, and that's how Bishop, I know, we know that we cannot do this without him. So when I pray, I'm saying, Lord, uh, what, what should be done? And how should it be done? And leadership would tell me, you need to pick somebody for this and this and that. I'll say, yes, sir. So I go to pray and I'll ask God, God, who should be in that position? Who should play this position? Who should do that? Who should do that? Who submitted? Who's this and that? And some of these things I know I can pick based on the scripture, what the scripture is saying. I can say, well, this is what the scripture says and this is what this is and that. That will give me my decision as well based on the scripture of how their walk is with God. So with that being said, I come and I say, from the scripture, this person is walking and doing what's right. Now, do I know everything in their life? I know, unless God exposes that to me. But with that being said, I'm going to put you in certain positions and I'll just watch. I'll watch. Do pastors make mistakes? Yeah. Yeah, we make mistakes. We do. Bishop will tell you, he's made many a mistake. Still on the part as well. Amen. But I know God is with us. I know God is with us. And so whatever I'm doing, I'm trying to please God. Never to try to do anything against what he's wanting done. So if it's his will for this person, particular person to be in that position, guess what? They're going to be in there. Especially if I want his will to be done. They will be in there. Why? Because the person that's in it. More than likely, it's going to get to a point where they're not going to be able to uh, flourish in that anymore or grow anymore. And from that, that'll let me know, you know what? Uh, your room is going to make, or your gift is going to make room for you. Uh, sis, can you do this? Or brother, can you, can you do this position? And once you get into that position and it flourished, God had you there all the time. So it doesn't work, I'm going to get you, it doesn't work out how sometimes we might think. It doesn't work out the way that we think or how we think a person should be there or when they should be there. But God has it under control. So when I say you are in a good place, you're at a good place when you have a pastor or leadership that has the heart to say, Lord, I want your will to be done and not mine. Amen. Amen. Uh, you were going to say something. careful about the decisions that Bishop was making because um, first of all I'm not to rebuke an elder and so I had to be careful because the way God deals with leadership is totally different from the way he deals with his saints and so with that being said whatever he's doing God that's between you and him that's between you and him you you this and that and you're working out this and that I'm praying for leadership praying for pastor praying for bishop however you do it that's you put him in the position okay then that's that's the way it is but and again if he's being led by the holy ghost and he has a heart to want to please god it will get to where it needs to get to mm -hmm. and every person that is in leadership that do whatever ministry that you're in you need to practice and we go home practice what you preach you got to practice so when i say that you, you need to be submitted I got to be the first one. Practice what you preach. If you're saying that 
I'm a teacher and I, and I want to be a teacher. Or I want to be this. I want to be a minister. I want to do this and that. Well, I'm going to see. Are you a teacher? Are you a minister? Are you teaching your children? Are you, are you a walking epistle? And one of the things that you want to make sure you're, you're careful not to do is not to get a leader mixed up with another leader. Don't ever get a leader mixed up with another leader. Because there are bad leaders. There are, not, there are some pastors that are not good. Disorder, no order there. Very, very uh, overbearing or very, very controlling. So what you said? Lords over God's inheritance? Yes. They are there. And it's very hard when those come, when you come across those type of people, because you tend to take a little bit of that that, that was done to you, and you, you can take that to nitpick or to try to say, there's the same thing that I saw in this person. But really the situation is you really have not let go of what you have been, you have gone through. Which is the bitterness that whatever happened to you there, you can come to where there is order and discipline and use that to say control is not what he or she was doing. It's just order here. And it's discipline here. There's a way that we do things. So if you still hold on to a little bit of that bitterness of what happened at that other place, you can bring that right here where you it's a good place to say and be uh, upset or angry or mad or hostile or, or just uh, incontent about where you are and this and that. That when you see certain things, you're like, that reminds me of such and such. But you got to understand, I'm not like any of the preacher in this city. Not one. Can you put me next to? Not one. Not one can you put me next to. Which is why I, I, I follow what it says. Look at chapter 5, verse Peter. Chapter 5, verse 1 to 3. Because I fear God. Anybody here scared of God? If you're not, that's what you need. Because when you fear God, there's, there's things that you're not going to do. I'm so scared of him that this, this God that made everything can kill me right now. That's how I'm scared of him. I love him, but he puts fear in me to the point where that fear that you would be like, please don't hurt me, please. Now you sit there and say, this is a grown man talking about please don't hurt me. Just like that, please don't hurt me. I fear him. Have mercy on everything. Give me the grace to take the next step. I don't even want to place the foot down because I don't want to make place the wrong foot down and go the wrong direction. I fear him. I'm scared of him. 
You've got to have leadership that's scared of Lord, of God. So I'm, I'm, that's where I am. I'm scared. And anybody that's in ministry, you too need to have the fear of God in you. To make you, when you do something, you, your mind goes straight to, daddy gonna get me. Daddy gonna get me. Jesus, Lord. Right then and there, when I know I made something, I'm like, Lord, please, 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 please. Forgive me. Please forgive me. Please, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I'm like, man, you scared like that? Yes. I know what he can do to me. The elders which are among you, I exhort. Who am I? Who am also and an elder, and a witness of the suffering of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of ready mind. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being an example or example to the flock. That's all. That's all I'm doing. Being an example and teaching his flock, his inheritance. You're not mine. Amen. Amen. And that's how you have to be even in your talents, your ministry, and your gifts. That you are an example to whoever you're leading. Amen. So let us pray. And uh, we have pizza for those who like a pizza, slice of pizza. Amen. <laughs> so let us pray. I'm hoping that there's enough in Jesus' name. But let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for your mercy, your grace. We thank you for your love and your kindness. We ask that you touch our heart. Create us a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within us. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. For these things that were said tonight, Father, the questions and the feedback and the scriptures was for a reason. You lead us in the Holy Ghost. You give us clarity from the scriptures, not our opinions, not what we think or our thoughts, but we want to walk up right before you. We want to be pleasing, and Father, we fear you, but Lord God, we love you, and you want us to love you more than to fear you, O oh God. When we love you, we'll do as you say. We'll do it and we'll obey because we love you, O oh God. We ask that you go with us tonight as we leave here, protecting us to be back in the house of the Lord on Wednesday in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless this food, sanctify it, make it pure. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Tell your brother and sister you're glad to see them tonight. And if you have an offering, you can go ahead and deliver an offering here if you, if you have it, if you want to. Amen. God bless you. In Jesus' name.